All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys a rifle that you may have seen before here on the channel, and that is my clone of the Navy Special Warfare Recon Rifle, which is also commonly referred to as a SEAL Recce. So the reason that I'm doing this video again and deleting my original upload on this bit on this gun is because I wasn't necessarily happy with the information that I put out in the first video and while that information was mostly correct I feel that it may have been incomplete and somewhat misleading as far as the implementation of these rifles and kind of where they fall in history as well as how they're similar and how they're different from other rifle programs that were very similar in nature such as the Mark 12 program. So that's mainly what I'm going to cover in this video is the history and inception of these rifles, how they compare to the Mark 12 program, which came slightly after the Seal Recce program, as well as uh, the different variations of this rifle that exist, which I totally failed to mention in the first video. So getting right into it, um, the overall trend that you see with the Seal Recce rifles as time went on from when they initially were being built in the early 90s up until about 2012 when you really stopped seeing pictures of them in use is that these rifles got shorter as time went on. And that kind of goes back to the concept of the Recce rifle, which is a rifle that is still as light and handy as your standard infantry rifle, such as the M4 carbine, but can still engage targets at longer distances with a higher degree of accuracy. So this kind of bridges the gap between your standard infantry rifle and something like a, a larger framed 308 or 762 uh, sniper rifle or DMR. So this is not a new concept and has been around for you know decades, but this was just a attempt to bridge that gap in a new way that hadn't been done before, at least among the SEAL teams. So shortly after the uh, SEAL recon rifle program was implemented, the Mark 12 program came to be in the late 90s. And it was very similar in nature, had a very similar driving force behind it. They wanted a rifle that had the same ammunition type and same parts commonality as the standard M4 and M16 rifles. But again, would have that longer uh, engagement distance that it was capable of. So where these two programs differ is both the scale that they were implemented on and who would actually get these rifles. Obviously the SEAL Recce rifles would be issued to SEALs since this was just done within the SEAL teams and the Mark 12 program was an attempt to do this on a larger scale across all of SOCOM. And because of that there was a greater, a much greater degree of freedom in what parts could be used and how these rifles could be issued among the SEAL teams versus when all of SOCOM wanted to adopt the Mark 12, they had to get permission from Big Army who actually made them jump through some hoops to end up with the 18 inch barreled SPR uppers that they started out with. Um, they actually initially were planning on making the Mark 12 a 20 inch gun, but because they already had 20 inch M16s in their inventory, uh, they had to go with a different barrel length so that at least on paper, the gun was different. <laughs> so. Uh, kind of funny how bureaucracy works like that, even inside the military. But getting back to the SEAL Recce program, um, these rifles had a much greater degree of customizing that happened between different individuals that were issued these rifles, both in the furniture and optics that would be used on them, as well as the barrel lengths that the guns would be delivered with. So earlier versions of these guns, you would see with 17 or 18 inch barrels. And then as time went on, you would see more 16 inch barreled versions. And eventually um, they shortened these rifles as much as possible to 15.1 inches um, to where they were still able to use the OpSync 12th model suppressor and the Knight's Armament long free float RAS handguard. You physically can't go any shorter than 15.1 inches without having the suppressor uh, come into contact with the handguard. So the reason that these rifles got shorter, uh, to my understanding, is that they wanted to differentiate them more from the Mark 12s, which were now in their inventory as of the late 90s. And they also wanted to go back to the original concept of a Recce rifle, was, which was to have a rifle that was more short and handy and compact and lightweight. So um, some people would joke that it's just that the Navy SEALs wanted to be special and have a shorter, you know, cooler looking gun. But uh, in all reality, 
Um, it was less redundant to have these rifles come, become shorter over time. So, as I mentioned earlier, these rifles were issued as late as 2012, when you can actually see them being used in uh, some training exercises that were actually included in the Medal of Honor Warfighter uh, video game promotion that was filmed shortly before the video game's release. Uh, now, before you guys say anything about that being, you know, just for the video game, no, those were actually real Navy SEALs who... Um, participated in that filming and that exercise that was used in that promotional material. And you can actually find articles detailing how those Navy SEALs were reprimanded and, you know, got into trouble over actually helping out the developers of that video game. So, fun fact. But yeah, the uh, version that was seen in those promos in 2012 is the version that I built here, which is the 15.1 inch barreled version which incorporates a, a Wilcox T1 mount on top of the Night Force scope. Prior to these, this version of the rifle, um, you would see rifles that were pretty much identical, but would incorporate older red dots and older uh, scopes, such as the uh, J-Point optics and the Doctor-style red dot sights, uh, which would also be mounted with a Wilcox mount. So whichever version of the rifle you decide to build, if you want to build one of these, uh, both of those mounts are very hard to find, though there is somebody uh, currently making a repro of those. So if uh, that ever comes out, I'll probably grab one and do a video on it. But yeah, as of right now, the uh, genuine Wilcox mounts are insanely expensive and I wouldn't recommend buying one. But um, So uh, lastly, I'm going to cover how this rifle program and the Mark 12 program sort of bounced ideas off of each other. So um, a lot of people or a lot of uh, people within SOCOM that were issued the Mark 12 initially were not a fan of the fixed stocks that came on the rifle. And those would be either A1 or they would be longer A2 style buttstocks. Um, because back then the theory was that a fixed buttstock would be a more stable and um, accurate platform to shoot off of. But because M4 carbines had already been getting issued for quite a while at that point, people were spoiled on the collapsing stock, which worked better with body armor. And so the SEAL recce rifles would maintain the collapsing stock, and that idea would actually transfer over to the Mark 12 program, where you would often see the Mark 12 with a collapsing stock. Now what the Mark 12 program brought to the table was the ammunition. The Mark 262 ammunition developed by Black Hills with SOCOM uh, was a phenomenal load that is still used today across, you know, all theaters that the U.S. is currently involved in, in many different platforms, by the way. Uh, that ammunition was commonly used in the SEAL recce rifles after it was implemented within SOCOM. Um, it was also used in a lot of other platforms like the Mark 18 and others, but um, bef prior to that, the recce rifles mainly had to run off of 55 grain or 62 grain, you know, ball or green tip ammo, which was not known for being the most accurate. So the Mark 12 program with its new ammunition type allowed the SEAL recce rifle to really start to shine and live up to its accuracy potentials. Um, now, whether or not any other ammo types were used in those prior to that, I can't say for sure but it would have been purchased in rather small batches or personally purchased, and I can't imagine that would have been a very popular method. Um, and these often would have been ran with just M193 or M855. So uh, that should give you guys a more complete picture of where this gun falls in history. It does slightly predate the Mark 12 program in concept, but the Mark 12 program was not necessarily an evolution of this. Uh, it was, they were just two attempts at the same end product, and as a result, they ended up being very, very similar. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions about this, feel free to leave them down below in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.